Okay, um, I'm going to have to um, turn into a teacher on this one. Um, I had exactly 11 people send me a link to this video, and two of them were cannon shooters. Uh, I'm not a cannon shooter. I haven't used cannon in a long time. I'm not the first person, certainly so, to jump to cannon's defense, but I have to jump to cannon's defense on this one because... Uh, there's a video posted uh, within the past 48 hours, and it is 100 per well, a section of it anyway, is 100% incorrect. And um, it talks about, let's just stick to the facts, and let's get, let's really nail it to the wall, okay? Um, I am of the opinion, now you tell me if I'm wrong on this one, okay? I'll let you make up your own mind. I'm of the opinion that if someone has the uh, largest photography channel on YouTube, getting the facts straight would probably be a high priority. And this inaccuracy has been stated many, many, many times. I've like, made ten videos on this fact about uh, exposure versus large sensors versus small sensors. Now you see this little sensor over here? This is an APS-C crop sensor. Okay, now let me ask you a question right now too, in a simple analogy. You know, I'm right now I'm standing on top of a rug, okay? Let's say this rug is soaking wet. It's just a, a thick rug and it's soaking wet, okay? Yeah, are you with me so far? Okay, baby is sitting on the rug, it's soaking wet, baby gonna get wet, right? If you place the baby here, it's gonna get wet. If you place the baby over here, if it get, it's gonna get wet. You know, it is equally wet all over this rug. Now, let's say I take that rug, and then I cut out a huge border around that rug, so it's about, I don't know, let's say it's half as big. Okay? Now, if I put the baby over any part of that now smaller rug, the baby is going to get just as wet. Correct? The rug is equally wet everywhere, whether the rug is huge or whether the rug is small. Wherever I set that little baby's bottom down, that baby's going to get wet, correct? Absolutely correct. Now, exposure is two things. Gain over a given period of time. Okay? I wish... Now, the only reasoning that I can have for why this per This person is actually talking about the flaws of, like, Canon versus Nikon. Um, and, you know, some of the stupid things Canon does, some of the stupid things Nikon does. That's all well and fine, okay? Uh, Canon uses a 1.6 crop factor instead of a 1.5 crop factor like I have right here. This is a Nikon D7100 sensor. 1.6 crop factor, which is 8.6% per, 8 smaller. 1.6 is 8.6% smaller than the 1.5 crop factor here. Now we're talking about surface area. This person accurately although misunderstands, uses the word surface area several times and then says the exact words square surface area. Exposure has absolutely nothing to do with sensor size. Nothing. All exposure is gain over a given period of time. Gain is of several natures. Let me list off the uh, natures of gain for you, okay? Pixel pitch, okay? the size of those photo sites. The micro lenses that actually sit over top of that photo sites. So we have the pixel pitch, the micro lenses, the size of those photo sites, the design efficiency of that sensor for the transmission, uh, and of course the aperture of the lens. So those are the nature of time, of course, is shutter speed. We know what time is. So all exposure, doesn't matter what damn camera you got or what size sensor it is, is gain and time, okay? Now, if this rug is equally wet that I'm standing on, no matter what size it is, if I set baby's butt down for 10 seconds on any part of this rug, no matter whether it's big or small, baby butt gonna get wet exactly the same, correct? So, <laughs> we have to get away from this stupid, and I know, and I made a video about this, where, where this person and many other people are misunderstanding this bucket analogy, okay? This bucket analogy does not work. Bucket analogy doesn't work. Now, a smaller sensor affects only two things. If we have a 1.6 crop factor on the Canon, which we do, okay, let's switch is 8.6% smaller than a 1.5 crop factor, two things are affected. The field of view, 
of the light that is projected from the same lens. So we got two cameras and they're both using the same lens. 1.6 crop factor, 1.5. The field of view. Obviously, if it's a smaller sensor, it's gathering less of a field of view. And additionally so, this is the only important thing, is we're making 20 by 30 prints off of everything. The percentage by which that image has to be magnified, obviously it needs to be magnified a little bit more because it is a wee bit smaller than a 1.5 crop factor sensor, which I got right, y'all. Yeah. I don't know how I can make this. You know, for a person that loves math so much, and look, this is, this is not personal. Um, this person has said, uh, this is an exact quote from this person. Exact quote. Um, I'm all, this is an exact quote, okay? Now, I may be very, very, very slightly off, but this is an exact quote from this person. I am open to being corrected if I'm wrong. Well, you've made a lot of videos saying that uh, <clears throat> larger sensors gather more light. Sensors don't work like picture windows, okay? If you want to talk about buckets, you can't talk about a sensor like a bucket. If you want to talk about millions and millions and millions of little buckets on a sensor, that is correct. Now, here, let's take a look. Let's take a look at a, uh, a larger sensor versus a smaller sensor. Given a, a, uh, a, given a, uh, a gain, aperture, and pixel pitch, if the photo sites are all the same size and I just crop out that sensor, <laughs> this is so simple. This should be like a fourth grade understanding. Okay, Same exposure here as I have over here. It doesn't matter what size the sensor is. You know, yeah, well, this is a larger bucket than this is, right? Yeah, it surely is. But you see, mm -mm, sensors are covered with millions and millions and millions of buckets. If you want to use a bucket analogy, let's use the bucket analogy. <sighs> let's also get really hardcore here, and let's just talk about something here. There is no aspect of exposure that has any connection to the size of the sensor. None, period, ever. Never, ever, ever. There is not one camera. Please, please listen to me. There's not one camera manufacturer that has ever, ever said that a larger or smaller sensor has any bearing on exposure. They never will because it is absolutely, palpably untrue, irrefutable, and undeniable. If you think a sensor is like a picture window, it's like, well, you, you get I to put a bigger window over here, it's going to let in more light. No, you're going to see a wider field of view, and there is going to be more total light. Sensors don't work off of total light. Okay? Sensors are gathering millions and millions of points of light. And whether that sensor is a bigger sensor or a smaller sensor, the exposure is the same. There is no aspect, there is no aspect of exposure that has anything to do with the size of the sensor, whether it's 1.5 crop factor like we have here, or Canon. I'm sticking up for Canon, by the way, which I, I don't do. I mean, I've, I've used Canon, you know, in ages past. Now, <clears throat> let's talk about Canon for a second. The only reason that Canon actually looks worse is what we already well known to people that are experts on cameras, people that are actually experts on cameras. Canon sensor technology is rather, no attack on Canon, rather infamously wee bit inferior to that used by Nikon and Fuji and the rest of the peeps. But this has everything to do with sensor design and efficiency, but not its size. This is irrefutable and undeniable. Now you see that I took this picture 20 years ago, and I printed this picture 20 years ago. This is a picture of my 4x5 camera. That is one huge honking sensor on the back. Heck, the sensor, well, it's not a sensor, it's a piece of film, same thing. There is a 4 inch by 5 inch sensor on the back of this camera. This was, I wish I still had this camera. All of the film for it now is ridiculously expensive, and 4x5 is really a pain in the crotch, you know? It sure as hell ain't no portable camera. This is the camera that I use in photography school, it's a Calumet 4x5. Now, that's got one huge ass sensor in it, but let me tell you something else. Now, you, you, listen up, okay? Listen up. Are you listening? Are you listening? Are you listening? Are you listening? If and this has actually been done in photography school for special effects. They take a piece of a 4x5 film that had been shaded, in other words, been exposed by the light a little bit so the corners were damaged. They'd cut it out in a dark room, or usually in a bag, and they would actually tape it to the slide-in where you actually drop the film in on the 4x5. Okay? 
Guess what happens if you take a piece of 4x5 film and you cut it down half the size or a third the size? You cut it down to the size of a post. If you cut a piece of 4 inch by 5 inch film and cut it down to the size of this right here or even the size of the cannon, guess what happens to exposure? Please, please let me, I'm going to pause while you answer this question. What happens to exposure if I take a piece of 4 by 5 film and I cut it down to the size of a postage stamp and stick it on the back of this camera? Exposure remains the same. You see, it doesn't matter if you're talking about film grain or photo site size. They're both basically equivalencies. Yeah, I know one is film and one is uh, digital uh, photo sites on a, uh, a sensor, but it's the same. Exposure remains the same. The only thing that changes is the field of view that's captured off that little tiny piece of film. This has actually been done. I remember one really neat photo project where a dude uh, taped uh, in total darkness, of course, some 35 millimeter black and white film to the inside of a 4x5 uh, slide in, drop in. So he had like uh, 12 images of, 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 uh, of uh, crap, 35 millimeter film, and he put it in the back of his 4x5 camera, and then clicked the exposure, and then he made a contact sheet print. I wish I had an image of that. It was really kind of ingenious. He made a contact. Exposure remains the same. <laughs> <laughs> Exposure is only two things, gain and time. Let me ask you a question, okay? There is not one camera manufacturer that on earth, on earth, that has ever said what this person says. Not one. Because it is not true. Let's just stick to the facts, okay? We are not... Now, have, you, have I used a name in this video? Have I, have I called anybody a name? No, I have not. Okay, facts. Hardcore, irrefutable, undeniable facts. If anybody wants to challenge me on what the hell exposure is, then you have at it at me. Let's have at it. Let's talk about exposure. Gain and time. We know what time is, shutter speed. Gain, like I said, is one of several different factors. Pixel pitch, micro lens, the size of the photo site, the design efficiency of the sensor for light transmission, and of course the aperture of the lens. Also, additionally so, the T-stop of the lens. Not the F-stop of the lens, but the T-stop, the true, true transmissive power. Some lenses are super efficient. So it's like car engines, you know, efficiency, like fuel efficiency. Same thing with lenses. Transmissive power of the lens. Have I missed something here? Have I missed something? Have I missed something? Have I missed something here? No. Let me give some exact quotes from this video. Some exact quotes. Canon has a 1.6 crop factor on their APS-C. Okay, that's correct. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, exact quote. Surface area of others' sensors are slightly bigger than Canon. Now, this person uses the exact word surface area. Length and width. Surface area, which has nothing to do with exposure. Nothing. A larger sensor versus a smaller sensor does not have a different exposure. All things being equal, if you make that sensor larger or smaller, if it's got the same lens and it has the same efficiency, everything remains the same, and all you do is change the size of the sensor, it has nothing to do with exposure. You see this? Same exposure. Big sensor, small sensor. Big sensor, small sensor. Same exposure. This is irrefutable. It is undeniable. 100% undeniable. I, come forward if you want to deny that. But please think before you actually post it. Okay? Because you're going to be wrong. You're going to be wrong. You're going to be wrong. Surface areas of other sensors are slightly larger than Canon sensors, is an exact quote. They are about 8.6% 8 bigger if you actually calculate, here's the really magical word, square surface area. So the person is actually talking about the true square surface area, uh, square surface area. like say, you know, 50 square millimeters or something like that. Sensors are not picture windows. They don't work that way. There is not one book, not one camera manufacturer, not one lens manufacturer that is going to tell you that exposure has anything to do with the size of the sensor. Why? Because it is not, not true. It's not only like, well, that's what you think. That's what you believe. That's what, you know, I think differently. Now, now you are entitled to your own opinions. Like, I like the taste of, uh, of sardines on my pizza. Ah! 
Okay, great. You're entitled to your own opinions. You're not entitled to your own facts. F-A-C-T-S. Facts. You're not entitled to your own facts. You're not. Another exact quote, which means at any given ISO, the cannon is gathering 8.6% less light and therefore generally has 8.6% more noise. Not true at all. What is known about Canon is that they have a wee bit inferior sensor technology, but it has nothing to do with the size of the sensor or the crop factor, same thing. He actually uses exact quotes, surface area, and then again, exact quote, square surface area. Square surface area has nothing to do with exposure. Nothing. Remember I told you about this Calumet 4x5 that I stuck a smaller piece of film in the back? Same exposure. The other guy that actually stuck 35 millimeter film in the back of this thing, a lot smaller. Same exposure. S same exposure. Exposure is gain in time. It doesn't have jack crap to do with the size of the sensor. It doesn't have a damn thing to do with it. I said the only reason I can think why this person has said this thing said this thing so many times is because they've actually said this so many times that uh, to to correct it they'd have to backpedal on the many many times that they have said this and that's the only logic that's pure speculation on my part but that's the only thing I could come up with let's be truth seekers okay I've not called anybody any names I'm gonna call myself a name let's call somebody I'm a fat bald Uncle, half Uncle Fester, half uh, platypus, sort of weird person, right? Um, but I'm going to equivocally state that you're entitled to your own opinions, but you're not entitled to your own facts. Okay? Now, another exact quote. Canon is handicapping themselves by almost 9% by uh, making the sensor just a wee bit smaller. No, they're not. Canon is handicapping themselves by having a wee bit inferior sensor technology. And here's another exact quote. Canon could make up this 8.6% difference if Canon... Here's a magical quote. Canon could make up this 8.6% difference if Canon made sensors of exactly the same size, meaning 1.5 crop factor instead of 1.6. No, that's not true. That's not true. Canon can make up for this uh, wee bit worse performance if they had uh, iso -less sensors, which they are starting to do now, or, and additionally so, they had better, more efficiency. It's efficiency! <laughs> you you, you kind of know how, like, uh, a really tiny engine today uh, has more horsepower than, like, a gigantic bastard engine from the, like, 1950s? It's like, well, that's a smaller engine. It can't produce more horsepower. Mm, yes, it can, because it's more efficient. It's better design. Yeah, boy. <laughs> Damn, really? You know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> no camera manufacturer, no lens manufacturer has ever told you or anybody else that exposure has a damn thing to do with sensor size because it does not. Does not. If you plan on refuting this video, please have at it. Because, meaning anybody. Because we'll, we'll have a nice little discussion. A polite one, okay? Let's be truth seekers. You're entitled to your own opinions, but you're not entitled to your own facts. You're just not. Sorry about that. Thank you for watching. Catch you later. I was very polite in this video. The only person I called a name was myself, okay? Let's be polite. Let's be nice. Let's be truth seekers. Nothing wrong with being... If someone has an issue with being a truth seeker, then you have issues, okay? We all have issues, but if you have an issue with me being a truth seeker, you know, and there's something wrong with you, baby. I love you all. Thank you for watching. And it's about seeking the truth. It's about being a truth seeker. Some people don't want to be a truth seeker. Look at that. La, 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 la. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Well, you know, fine. Whatever. Ha, 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 ha.